you probably already know what dual boot is this is when you have more than one operating system on the same computer at the boot time you choose which operating system to use linux or windows i have already shown you how to dual boot and it's a pretty much straightforward thing but in this video i'm going to show you how to dual boot ubuntu with windows 10 encrypted with bitlocker here we go so what do you need for this procedure you need one windows 10 system with bitlocker encryption a usb key with at least 4 gb in size you should also have a microsoft account so that you can save the recovery key for the bitlocker encryption i'll be showing you that in a moment you need to have a good internet connection and this is optional yet recommended that you have an external usb disk external ssd of this kind or external hdd which is a bit cheaper ssd is a bit faster so that you can just you know copy your important files on the external disk just to make sure that it is safe because you are dealing with partition and it's always good to be careful optionally you can also have a windows recovery disk so that if anything goes wrong should not but let's imagine the worst if anything goes wrong you can recover your system fix the boot issues if anything goes wrong and of course you should have some time and patience to you know complete this procedure that's it let's see how to dual boot ubuntu and windows 10 pro encrypted with bitlocker step by step the first step is to make backup of your important data this is optional yet recommended you should make a backup of your important files on an external disk because you are going to deal with disk partitions. If you are not sure of anything, I suggest look for documents, music, videos, movies and other important stuff you must not lose and copy them on an external USB disk. You can use an external HDD or SSD. Both are good option. I have this SanDisk Extreme SSD and it's super fast. It's a bit expensive but super fast device. If possible, have a Windows 10 recovery disk with you as well. Because if anything goes wrong, you can recover your Windows and restore the boot records. The second step is to verify that you have BitLocker encryption and turn it off. Because you cannot dual boot with the BitLocker encryption on. So in the Windows menu, look for BitLocker and then go to the BitLocker settings. Before you disable BitLocker encryption, you must back up your recovery key. It is a 40 digit key to reset BitLocker encryption. Why? Because you are going to change the boot settings and BitLocker won't like that. It will ask you to enter recovery key to ensure that your encrypted disk is in safe hands. You may back up your recovery key on an external USB disk or to your Microsoft account. I recommend using Microsoft account because you can access it from anywhere on any device and it will be safe forever in one central place. Of course, you must ensure that you have access to a Microsoft account, which is linked to your current Windows installation. You can verify that your recovery key is properly saved by going to this link. I'll also provide this link in the description. Once you have saved the recovery key, disable BitLocker encryption. The decryption process may take some time depending on how much disk space you have already utilized. While you wait for the decryption to complete, you should go and download Ubuntu ISO. I'll just speed up this process. So once the BitLocker is disabled, you will see that it asks you to turn it on again. This is an indication that the BitLocker is disabled. The next step, you download the Ubuntu ISO. It's a single file with the extension ISO and it is around 2 GB in size. You can download it directly by clicking this download button on this web page which I have shared the link in the description and you can also use the alternate downloads to download it via torrents if you have a bit slow or inconsistent internet. The next step is to create a live USB of Ubuntu. For this you can use Etcher or Rufus tool. 
both are good tools and easy to use. In this tutorial, I'll be using Rufus. So plug in the USB key. Since the USB will be formatted, make sure it does not consist of any important data. Rufus automatically identifies the plugged in USB key. It will still be a good idea to make sure that it is pointing to the correct USB. Then you should browse to the location of the downloaded ISOMS. You must ensure that it uses GPT partitioning scheme and UEFI target system. Hit the start button to initiate the process of live USB creation. If asked, choose write in ISO image mode. It will take a few minutes to complete the process. Once you have the live USB ready, the next step is the actual installation of Ubuntu Linux. With the live USB of Ubuntu plugged into your Windows system, it's time to boot into this live system. So what you can do is, from Windows, go and search for UEFI and go to change advanced startup option. Under the advanced startup option, click on restart now button. On the next screen, click on use a device. You should see your actual hard disk and the USB key here. Click on the USB key. You can identify it with the name and the size of the disk. Now it will power off your system and reboot into the disk you chose, which should be the live USB disk, of course. When you boot from the live USB, you should see this grub screen that presents you the option to try Ubuntu in live USB or install it right away. If you are trying it, you can just click on this install button and initiate the installation process. The first few steps are really easy. You have to choose the language of your operating system and the keyboard layout. On the next screen, it asks for the kind of installation. Go with normal installation. No need to download updates or install third-party software just yet. You may do it after installation completes. In my experience, it increases the installation time duration and may also create issues at times. I prefer to avoid it. It takes a little time at this screen, but then you should see the installation type screen. This is one of the most important parts of the dual booting procedure. If you see the install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager, it's good news. You can proceed with the rest of the installation. But if you are one of the unlucky ones who don't see this option, quit the installation and do some additional efforts, which includes going back to Windows, go to Disk Management Settings, and shrink your C drive or DE or F drive, whichever you have plenty of free space and make some free space where you'll be installing Ubuntu. It could be 30 GB, 50 GB or 100 GB, it depends on you. Once you have the free space, repeat the procedure which I showed, which is to access the UEFI settings and booting through the live Ubuntu USB. When you see the installation type screen again, you will be choosing something else and here you will be utilizing the free space to create one single root partition. You can also do root home swap, but for simplicity, just create a root partition on this free screen by pressing the plus sign. And then you can go on with the installation of Ubuntu. Please do not be confused. You just have to make sure that you are going ahead with the installation. If you have the install Ubuntu alongside Windows option, the next step is easy. You just drag this divider and allocate the appropriate disk size for your Ubuntu install. Click on install now and it takes a little bit time here and afterward things are pretty straightforward. You will be asked to select a time zone. You'll be asked to enter your username, host name, which is your computer's name, and a password. Now it's just a matter of waiting. It should take 8 to 10 minutes to complete the installation. Just wait a little bit, grab a coffee, play some music, or whatever you want to do. Once the installation finishes, restart the system. 
you will be asked to remove the USB disk, remove it of course and then system reboots after this. If everything has gone well, you should see this grub screen which should give you the option to boot into Ubuntu or into Windows. For the first time, you should go and check Ubuntu and see what it looks like. This is what it actually looks like generally. You are almost there and ready to enjoy Ubuntu and Windows and you actually leave it here. But it would be a good idea to enable BitLocker again to enjoy the BitLocker encryption, you know, the encryption it offers. If you want to do that, what you have to do is you have to go back to Windows and re-enable BitLocker. So for that, restart your system and this time from the grub screen select Windows Boot Manager. In Windows, go to BitLocker settings and click on turn on BitLocker option. Here is an important thing. Each time you disable and re-enable BitLocker, the recovery key changes. This is why you'll be asked to back up your recovery key once again. Save it to your Microsoft account again. And once it has saved, on the next step, it will ask whether you want to encrypt the entire disk or only the used space. You can go with either option. And the next is encryption mode. Again, you can go with the default choice. Start the encryption. Please keep in mind that encrypting the disk will take some time based on your used disk space and consumes considerable processing power. So have some patience. Once it is complete, you are almost done, except for one thing. You change boot settings, BitLocker won't like this. So the next time you try to boot into Windows, it will ask for the BitLocker recovery key. This is the screen this is what it looks like so it will give you a recovery key id what you have to do is you have to use the first eight characters of this recovery key id and on a mobile device or another computer access your microsoft account and retrieve the recovery keys you had saved you can identify the correct recovery key with the help of the recovery key id on the screen, you use this 40 digit recovery and enter it. Don't worry, you won't be asked to enter this 40 digit recovery key every time you boot into Windows. This is just for the cases when you change something in the boot settings. This is why I advised you to use your Microsoft account because your recovery key will be saved on cloud and you can access it from any device anytime in the future. I know it seems like a long process with too many steps, but it's a detailed procedure and trust me, dual booting is not that complicated anymore. It used to be a lot, but Linux has improved a lot and it plays very well with UEFI and secure boot. I have done dual booting so many times, so it feels like a really simple task for me. What about you? Did you manage to dual boot it properly or did you face any issues or do you have some questions just by watching this video? Leave a comment and I'll try to help you out. And please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and if it helped you, please consider donating us via Ko-fi. See you in the next video. Bye bye.